Hello, 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 happy Sunday. Um, so, hello. It's cold today. I had my first hot drink from Starbucks in a long time because it was kind of a cold day here in Minnesota, North Dakota. Anyways, um, sorry, I'm rambling. Right from the beginning, I'm rambling. Um, tonight I was walking my dog and I was listening to a podcast and they were talking, it was a news podcast, they were talking about something that I hadn't really thought about before. And that is, there are older lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer people, LGBTQ people that need places to live, nursing homes, things like that. And um, <laughs> these people back in the day were very often rejected by their parents because now they're in their 70s and 80s and um, late 60s even, and they were rejected by their families. They often didn't have children. Um, so now they're essentially alone in the world. And when they find themselves needing care, they end up going to a regular nursing home, um, which very often has no policy in place to protect people who are LGBTQ, which I was like, I've never really thought about that. Um, I believe the statistic was like 18% of the nursing homes in the country um, or assisted living facilities, retirement communities have a policy. Um, many of them are run by religious organizations and they pointed out that lots of them have policies, but many of them don't. And then even if they do get accepted to those places, they ultimately end up going back into the closet after being out of the closet for so many years because they face discrimination if they come out in those, those places. So, not only have they been discriminated against them that for their lives, you know, just for being who they are, but also in job discrimination. Historically, we found that these people had been discriminated against in jobs, and so they make less money. There's all kinds of data, but I'm not my point. It was really interesting, but so the interesting thing was that there's this place in New York City called Stonewall House that opened um, not too long ago, and they were talking about this place, which it's a residential facility, apartment complex, basically, um, that has an LGBTQ affirming policy. Um, the residents were talking, they were interviewing people who moved in there, and they were talking about how they were treated in previous places. And I found myself just incredibly sad listening to these stories about the things that they'd been through and the treatment that they received in previous facilities. Um, and I was like, God, what kind of world are we living in? It's just crazy, right? Hang in there with me, okay? But then they sort of transitioned to, um, um, and again, I want to also point out that this is not a place just for LGBTQ people, which I think is even more amazing. They just have a policy and they're an affirming place so that um, people who otherwise um, may not engage with someone who's LGBTQ might have an opportunity to, even in their later years, and find that they're just like everybody else. So I thought that was a really good thing. Um, but towards the end, they started, you know, as I was just really getting to a funk, like walking my dog, right? Um, getting depressed about this whole, oh my gosh, this is crazy. Then they started talking about um, their experience now living in Stonewall House. And you could hear it in their voice. You could hear this joy. The place where they live, they found joy there. They get to feel safe there. They get to have conversations with people and be authentically who they are in the world and they don't have to pretend. That was joy. That was just crazy. I'm like, I was so bummed out. And then all of a sudden, because I'm paying attention and I'm listening. So it got me thinking, like I'm always saying, um, you know, we're always hearing people moaning about the state of the world, you know, um, constant complaining about how polarized we are today. And I'm so tired of hearing that people. So if you're one of those people, stop it. We are not as polarized as we like to think we are, right? Just stop it. So this sort of got me thinking as I was hearing this story, it made me think about that. But it also made me realize, I've always saying like, we have to have an intention to find joy, right? We have to look for it. Like in those moments when we're at our worst, we have to look for the joy. And if we look, we'll find it. I've, I've said that a lot, right? But what I also realized tonight on my walk was, we also have to have an intention to see change in the world, the change that's happening around us. And not just bemoan how awful the world is today, but recognize that 20 years ago, 
housing for people like this wouldn't have existed. And this is just one example. We could talk about misogynistic behavior, right? We could talk about bigotry and racial discrimination. And there's all kinds of examples about how we are better today than we were yesterday. That makes me happy. So stop being one of those people that talks about how awful the world is and how polarized we are. Stop it. See the change and see the good that's there. Recognize it and appreciate it. That's my message for tonight. That's all I got. Love. Mm -hmm.